Hey everyone, it's Joey from the Wildwood Video Archive, and today we're in Cape May, New Jersey because we're finally tackling that rumor that's been going around for, what, feels like decades by now, that at one point Disney came to the Wildwoods and Cape May to get inspiration for Walt Disney World. That's right. Now before we dive into this, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. Here in Florida, we have something special we never enjoyed at Disneyland. A blessing of five. Come on, we've all heard the rumors. You know, that Disney built the Grand Floridian based off of the Cape May Nun Retreat House, or that Disney was secretly planning on purchasing land in Lower Township to build a Northeast Park. But are there any Disney rumors that are real? Let's jump back in time to the 1980s. Walt Disney World at this time was exploding with travelers coming from all around the world. It was around this time that Epcot had only been open for a few years, and the company was already working on an additional third park, Hollywood Studios, or as it was known back then, MGM Studios. With expanding their theme parks, Disney knew that they would have to also expand their resorts. Covering nearly 40 square miles, Walt Disney World Resort is about the size of two Manhattan islands put together. Though they had vast land, Disney knew that they wanted to build a brand new resort next to their latest park, Epcot. They settled on a little plot of land southwest of the park. Now that they had the spot, they now needed a theme. Theming for Disney is a big part of not only their parks, but also their resorts. During this period, then Disney CEO Michael Eisner was very much interested in gauging top architectural talent for studio projects in Burbank and the Disney Resort properties around the world. For this project, Disney decided to hire New York architecture firm Robert A.M. Stern Architects, or Ramza for short, to design not one, but two resorts. Normally the job of designing these resorts would have been on the hands of the Disney engineering team, but with so many projects going on with MGM Studios, they had their hands full. Ramza already famously designed hotels and administration buildings for the company in Burbank, so when it came to this project, it was a no-brainer for Eisner. As soon as the project was handed to Ramza, they got to work. They quickly pitched the concept of having the resorts mimic two things that every shore town has, a beach and a marina. Their pitch included architectural styling from seaside resorts in the Victorian age, and Eisner loved the idea and greenlit the project. Being that Cape May was only two hours from New York City, Ramza and a few Disney employees made their way to Cape May for inspiration. According to Ramza, they studied the color scheme and the decor of the Victorian houses in Cape May. After spending a few days undetected, they made their way back up to New York City to finalize their plans. In 1990, the two resorts Disney's Yacht and Beach Club opened. They featured a combined total of 1,215 rooms, a 110,000 square foot convention center, and a 35,000 square foot fantasy pool. Their buildings clearly showed a style that mimicked Cape May in many ways, not only in their Victorian architecture, but also in some of their paintings. As a nod to Cape May, they added a few things in their beach club resort. Some rooms were decorated with art depictions of Cape May, and the hallways showed maps of New Jersey and Cape May and Wildwood right in the middle. The ultimate nod was in the form of a restaurant. Inside Beach Club, they built the Cape May Cafe, which is a full seafood buffet. Before its recent renovation, the resort had photos in their hallways of Cape May but sadly, most of them have been removed after the renovations. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, wait a minute, Joey, the video is only halfway through. This can't be the only time Disney came to Wildwood or Cape May, was it? I mean, 
they, they had to come again. I mean, you still have half of a video left. And you're right, they did come again. In 1990, Disney was once again looking to expand the resorts, and they were eyeing up the land in front of the Yacht and Beach Club. To keep up with the shore theme, they knew they wanted a boardwalk, but they needed to keep the age of the property close to the Victorian age, and so they went with the 1920s. Once again, Disney hired Ramza, who started researching shore towns and made their way back to Wildwood in Cape May. For this part of the history, let's welcome Charlie Hardiman, who was the manager for the Walt Disney World Resorts and the head of the Boardwalk Project. Hardiman had been touring the country with Disney executives to look at boardwalks to get inspiration for the physical boardwalk and the restaurants that would be built on it. It was in the summer of 1990 that they made their way to the Jersey Shore. Take up your grip and head for cool Cape May. Hardiman, who wanted to get the full 1920s experience, decided to stay at the Queen Victorian Inn in Cape May. It was there that word got out that he was from the Disney Corporation. The owners of the inn, Dane and Joan, were always trying to keep their guests entertained by teaching them a little history of Cape May and its surrounding cities. When casually bringing up Disney, he explained to them that they were opening up a new hotel called The Boardwalk and wanted to learn about the boardwalk culture. Dane and Jones set them up with a trolley tour of the Wildwoods. Now at this time, the doo-wop tours were no longer around, but being that it was Disney, they were able to get something together for the Disney executives. The tour gave a full history of the Wildwoods and its doo-wop culture. As Dane was getting the tour set up, word got out to the Moorys that Disney was in town. Considering that the Mori family built many of the doo-wop motels that we love today and ran the greatest seaside amusement park on the East Coast, it was key for them to be on the tour. After their trolley tour, they made their way onto the boardwalk where they visited the amusement parks and the arcades. Now we will never know what they discussed on the trolley tour or on their tour of the boardwalk, but we do know that they spent much time in our area before leaving and drawing up the plans for Disney's boardwalk. It wouldn't be until July 1st, 1996 that the resort would open. As a nod to Wildwood, which gave them so much inspiration, they named a game section on the boardwalk called Wildwood Landing. This section had many of the famous Midway games that you'd find on our boardwalk today. So it's cool to know that our little towns here in South Jersey, Cape May and the Wildwoods, had some kind of lasting imprint on the Walt Disney World Company. And to be able to have a little bit of our town make a little Disney magic is pretty cool. There are so many people I want to thank for allowing me to put this video together and help me from Walt Disney World themselves to a lot of historians from architects in New York City and architects in California. We really had a lot of people come together for this video, so I'm going to go ahead and put those names below here. I also want to thank my Patreons that actually support me online to allow me to spend the time to put these videos together. You too can become a Patreon. I'll put the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Joey Contino, and as always, I'll see you on the beach.